So before we begin, I want to talk about the music on my channel. All of my weekly music and other music projects will now be uploaded to a separate channel to keep everything organized. This channel is called Bad Duck Music and if you want to keep seeing my music you can subscribe over there using the info card in the top right corner of the video. Alright, now let's get on with the video. Today I will show you how to add juice to any game using at least one of these five simple methods. As an example I will use Space Invaders to illustrate that this can apply to absolutely any game. So let's get into it. Number one. Juicy squash and stretch animations. This works especially well with squishy objects like balls falling on the ground. But I love using squash and stretch animations when animating an object that shoots a projectile. It just adds so much liveliness to that object instead of looking like an inanimate spaceship, for example, in the case of our game. The more squash and stretch you add, the squishier an object looks. So absolutely don't do this with objects like metal crates or something because that will just look wrong and it won't really look great. Also keep in mind the proportions of an object because you don't want to shrink or grow an object. So if you make the length bigger, you should make the width smaller and not just make the length bigger and just not change the width because that's not how it works. Number two, particle systems. Particle systems are useful to do a lot of stuff like explosions and waterfalls and all those things, but they can also be used for when you destroy an object. Something about seeing an object explode into thousands of bits just feels a lot more satisfying to me than seeing an object just disappear. So adding a particle system will really add a lot of that juice to your game. It also helps that you can very easily customize your particle systems in Unity, so you can apply them in practically any situation in your game. Shoutouts to Billy Man, he's a fellow lover of particle systems. Number three, screen shake. A lot of games, from FPS games to platformers, even some puzzle games, simulate impact by adding screen shake. We will add this to our game for when an enemy dies. This is really effective and this helps to add the feeling that you actually hit something instead of when before it just plopped out of existence without any impact at all. Don't overdo this though because heavy screen shake for actions that aren't really that impactful in the game just take you out of the immersion and it just feels weird and not good to look at. Number 4. Custom Scene Transitions a game that does this a lot is Celeste, and in my opinion it really adds to the beauty of this game. This isn't something that necessarily adds juice to your game, but it does add a lot of personality and makes the game look very polished. So if you're going for that kind of look and you actually want to have a game that looks as if it's made by a development studio, do add this, because it will just make this game feel just this little extra juicy. And now for the final tip, drum roll please. Number five, sound effects. Sound is an area that is often overlooked by beginner game developers, which is a shame because it adds so much to a game. Hell, there's even an entire genre based completely on sound, which is the rhythm games genre. Adding sound effects to your game by using free programs like SFX Arc can already add so much juiciness to a game. So whenever you're making a new project, make sure to put sound effects on your Trello list. It's honestly something so overlooked, but it's if it's not there, it feels so wrong and it feels so as if it's made really by a beginner. So if you want to be taken seriously and to look like someone that is a professional, then you need to absolutely add this to your game. Juice is something that makes a game feel so much more alive and so much more engaging for me and it's something that's often overlooked by beginners so please use these tips and I guarantee that your game will feel a lot better to play and that you will get better feedback on your games because it will just be better. So yeah, those were the five tips. Thank you for sticking with the video for so long and here is an extra tip for watching the video for so long. Number six, a hit lag. Hit lag is 
something I see kind of as optional because hit lag doesn't really work for all games but it does work when things in the game are affected directly by the player and with that I mean something like a melee attack like a punch or a kick. Fighting games use this a lot to add a lot of impact when you punch someone or you kick someone and this just gives the attack so much more juice, so much more power and strength behind it. But I do recommend staying away from this when you're making any game where you can shoot or do something from a distance because if you then add a hit lag effect it will just look more like lag instead of an impact. So that was it, thanks so much for watching and if this helped you in any way please sh make sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. See you next week!